Hello fellows, it is the first lecture on data structure. Uh, there is a misconception about data structure that it is a difficult subject. Like you can see in this picture that this man is very worried and he is saying that data structure is too embarrassing to explain. So first of all we see, is there any reality in this myth that data structure is a difficult subject? My point of view regarding this is that our brain is very smart. Our brain doesn't want to accumulate extra things which it thinks uh, those things are extra and those things are not needed by us. So our brain stores only those types of things, those types of data which is directly related to real life. So if we are able to connect something with real life then it is stored in our brain for a long period of time. But if the data, we are not able to connect the data with real life, our brain doesn't store it for long. It flushes it out or it filters out after some time. So in this course, I'll try my best to uh, relate this course or uh, this subject with real life examples so that it becomes easy to easy to learn and easy to uh, understand, and our brains, our brain enjoys uh, this subject. So first of all, we see what is data structure. Data structure is act actually the structure of data, the systematic organization of data. And the question is why why do we need it? Why do we need data structure? Uh, answer is very simple. Say you have few books in your bag and someone asks you to uh, give him some specific book like the book of biology or physics and you open the bag and give him that required book. That's quite easy because you have only four to five books in your small shoulder bag. But problem arises when you have a pile of books like like this you have this pile of books and now someone demands some specific book now it is very difficult for you to locate that specific book easily from this pile of books so it if it is good day you may find that book quite easily it may be the first or second book but if it is a very bad day there are chances that the required book may be the last book in your in your search so how to solve this problem to locate the required book in a very efficient and quick way library owners have solved this problems if you go to any library you will see that there are cupboards and shelves for books so specific types of books are kept in specific shelves so you know that this shelf is dedicated for physics and this shelf is dedicated for chemistry so you go to that specific shelf and then you search the books of your own interest if we analyze this solution in the perspective of computer programming the technique used in computer programming is called arrays so we have array data structure and in array data structure what we do, we store the same type of data in consecutive memory locations. Like we have here, we have three arrays, array for physics. You can say in terms of library science, it is a shelf for physics books, shelf for chemistry books, and shelf for biology books. So in this design, we have to allocate the space in advance. So we have allocated these 10 cells for physics in advance. Say you have only 5 books for physics and then you have only 3 books for chemistry and then here you have only 2 books for biology. So now we have these extra space these extra cells which are not used by any 
other book say you get more physics books here you get more physics books and this shell is filled with all the physics books and these two shelves have still some space and now you get an other physics book no you you have to do not have space in this shelf so what we will do so this is a real problem in case of array array is a good data structure in terms of access because you can allot a specific number to each book you can uh, in other sense you can have index number and you can find any required book by using its index number but array is very bad in terms of memory efficiency because it wastes a lot of memory now we have another physics book but we do not have memory because this shelf is always full and we cannot place physics book in array of chemistry or in array of biology so to solve this problem that we should be able to place the object anywhere in the memory wherever we we see the free memory we have an alternative data structure which is called linked list so what is linked list in linked list we actually link different objects with each other say you have a problem that you want to lock all these drawers in this cupboard and so if you lock all these drawers you will have a bunch of keys with so many keys and it, it will be very difficult to carry those keys so one solution may be that you lock this drawer and put its key in this drawer then you lock this drawer and put its key in this drawer and so on so forth you keep on locking these drawer and putting the keys in the next drawer so finally when you lock this drawer you put its key in your pocket so in this way your pocket has only one key and by using that key you open this drawer and then from this drawer you get the key of this drawer then you open this drawer and so on you open all these drawers reach this corner so what does it mean it means you have connected all these drawers with each other so this is called a linked list i have connected these drawers consecutively but it's not mandatory that you connect the drawers consecutively you can connect or link these drawers in any manner like you lock this drawer and put its key in this drawer and lock this drawer and put its key in this drawer and so diagonally you move this way and store its key now when you come here you open this drawer and you will find the key of this drawer so you will open this drawer and so you reach this drawer so you can move in any direction you can even skip the drawers like you you see the key of this drawer in this drawer and then or then the key of this drawer in this drawer this drawer so you move from here and then here so linked list solves the problem of memory wastage like in this case now what we do we get another six book we will store it here and another six book we will store it here then we get another chemistry book we will store it here or anywhere else even you will store it here as well so all the cells are available you just have to connect those cells with each other and so uh, and then we, you get biology books you put it here so i remove biology books from here and these arrays are no more dedicated for specific type of object it is just a memory and we are storing the objects in the memory and now what we do we keep the record of the first uh first object like let me get uh, do some drawing for you so we store we will store only three keys key 1 it is for physics books it will point to this drawer this is a key of this drawer and 
next we ne the key of next door we will find in this door so in this door we will find the key of next door and here we will find the key of next door so on all of these doors are connected this way and here we key that find the key of this next door and here so here next we do not find any key here is a cross so we have to store only one pointer k1 for physics books and we will get access to we will have access to all the physics books similarly an other key key to it is for chemistry here and here we find next doors key next doors key no more link it is cross here and similarly k3 k3 will have link to so sorry not cross here with eraser it is eraser Mm, I think there is not a reason. We have to link this with this as well. Link this with this door. So here we will have a cross. And for biology, here and next here and next no link, so cross here. So in this design, we have only three keys, and with physics key, we can go to all the physics books similarly with chemistry key and with biology key so this is called link list so link list is very efficient in 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 saving space in saving memory but here you see another problem that to say the required physics book is this one but you have the pointer only to the first physics book which is this so you will have to come all the way through these physics books and finally you will reach here so uh, here the problem is sometime you will get a delay while to reach the required object but the memory will be very efficiently stored so to the workaround so the solution for this problem is a tree in tr here you store the data in a serial wise you search the data in the in a serial wise with uh, computational complexity of O n but in trees these steps are minimized uh, and with the complexity of log n for example uh, if you move here let me erase this first this is a tree and you may assume that all these leaves are the data and suppose you have to reach here so you will in, in, in reaching here you will do not need to traverse all these branches you will just come here turn right then another turn right and so you will here you will reach here by taking just three or four turns so just in three or four steps you will be able to reach this point so this is the advantage of tree that the access point is minimized and at the same point the memory is very efficiently used just like link list because here again we have the link of the next data so if you are here in the root so your data is suppose here you will have just this first step second step third step fourth step so this is a tree data structure so it was uh, just an introductory lecture about data structure. So the most famous data structures are array data structure, linked list data structure, and tree data structure. And using a linked list or array, you can build queues and stack. Stack means first, uh, last in, first out. Like do and undo commands in your uh, computer. You can see the last task is reversed back first and then the next then the second last task is rushed back and Q is also very applicable in computer programming here the mechanism is first in first out just like CPU scheduling and and uh, printer scheduling so these are uh, this, it was just an introductory lecture 
so for details about the data structure you have to uh, visit my next video lectures thanks and stay tuned